Well, tango is uh, music that's at least 100, maybe 200 years old, and you can get into an argument with people as to what its origins are. Uh, the Argentines make a proper claim to have invented, or at least made prosperous, the tango. But it clearly has uh, French as well as Italian and some African origins. What we know about tango in the 20th century comes through the work of um, publications of Gardel and certainly Piazzolla. What interested me about tangos was uh, the way that it seems to have permeated throughout world music. People who have never been to Argentina uh, uh, have come under its spell. And this concert, I wanted to show some of its diaspora. Uh, it's found, tango has found its way into the musical of Europe of uh, Stravinsky, as well as uh, Isaac Albanez, um, the music of Copland, that it has become in the 20th century what the waltz was in the 19th century, starting off as a plaintive dance, finding its way into a musical forms. It would be next to impossible to dance to Chopin waltzes, but indeed what he's attempting to capture is his musical expression of a dance form. And I think what these composers were trying to do was capture in what they understood to be their Western classical tradition, uh, the dance form of tango. Well, actually, this, the first half of this concert builds off on the uh, Ivar Mishikov tango collection from uh, 25 years ago. Uh, the collection actually were a series of commissions to dozens, if not scores, of composers to write little tangos to build a vocabulary of tangos in classical music. Uh, tangos, by their nature, like waltzes, have to be have miniatures. Uh, they're not a musical form that would lend itself to a 40-minute exposition or to sonata form, a symphonic form. They have to be miniatures. Um, so I tried to select tangos that would be known by their composer's name. Not all of these are sonic uh, pieces that you, that you would know, melodies that you'd recognize. But I thought it would be interesting to show an audience um, Stravinsky's interest in the tango, to show an audience um, Satie's interest in the tango, kind of a mocking interest at that, in that all of these composers use those rhythms, those ostinato rhythms of tango, but they use them in a way that is honest to their own musical style.
I think the appeal of tango is, is not new. Meaning composers have looked at um, uh, lots of dance forms and have incorporated them into their sonatas and symphonies. A good examples would be the gavotte for jazz Bach, which was a traditionally a Baroque and early Renaissance dance form uh, and became part of the Bach partitas, the Bach, part of the Bach English and French suites. Uh, if we look a little later in the lexicon of musical, Western musical tradition, uh, Beethoven's appropriation of the Echolis in his shorter piano pieces the Lendler and Schubert's uh, piano pieces, that these dance forms find their way into classical music uh, pretty much uh, for the purposes of the, that composer trying to express in sonic terms what he or she had seen visually. So it's not unique that a tango would f ultimately find its way into the catalog of classical music composers, that they would find that infectious nature, particularly for the tango, terrifically infectious nature, and to use those proportions, those ostinatos, those um, pitch intervallic uh, uh, preferences, those repetitions that, that come over and over again as the basis of a, of a musical genre, a musical style that I would suspect maybe 30 to 40 years from today composers will be using hip-hop in some ways that uh, we can't possibly foresee right now. I got to know Coco about five years ago. Actually, it was uh, just before Y2K. He was performing the Piazzolla Concerto with the San Diego Symphony. And George Lewis was having a piece premiered that same night. I invited um, the principals of the orchestra and the board of directors to my loft downtown. I expected 35 people. Uh, someone um, duplicated the invitation, and I had uh, 155 people show up at this party following the concert. And somewhere around 2 in the morning, we're all exhausted, lots of beers consumed. And um, Coco just started playing Bend and Leon and singing tangles. This is 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. 150 people sit on the floor in the loft and listen to him for the next 40 minutes singing and playing tangles. And I wanted to, in some magical way, publicly recreate that moment to give Coco Trevisono an audience an intimate audience, an occasion where a folk musician can present the music he was born and raised and knows so well.
We added the dances uh, thanks to Dr. Leon Fireman uh, and his El Mundo Tango in, uh, Mir in the Miramar area because uh, tango is dance. You can listen to the music and imagine what the dancing would be like, but it would be useful to actually see uh, dancing couples, couples dancing to tango. And we had quite a mixture. Um, Devora and Leon Fireman were one pair of dancers. We also had Florentine Guisar and Isabel Kay, who will teach tango at UCSD. Uh, those uh, couples, I think, added something quite special to see the visual representation of what uh, Coco and Marcello Caceres were playing. Mm -hmm. 